Amen. Amen and amen. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither disgrace, for you will not be put to shame. Oh God. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says the Lord your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. Amen. My Redeemer lives. <laughs> Amen. Every time I hear words, I hope. You know, you're all called to overcome. Not one person in this room hadn't been called to overcome. No, just hang on. I'm going to lose my pain. Praise God. Praise God, and I agree with that really, baby. Beautiful thing in the Most beautiful thing in it. Praise God, is that better? All right. That's why I wear braces. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I want to continue speaking about authority. I tell you, I, with what I've been going through the last probably four months, I've been getting taught a lot about authority. I, I sense that when we pray for people, we should be getting results quickly. <laughs> Anybody want that? No authority, no results. <laughs> Understand? No authority, no results. It's the authority that God's given us. And sometimes I look at people who are sick and hurting and I think, we've got to do something about that. Somehow we've got to get the anointing of God, the kingdom of heaven, to their address. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Somehow that's our job. That's why we've been spared. That's why we've been saved to walk on this earth. Salvation started the day we gave our hearts to the Lord. And I believe it's up to us to release the power and the kingdom of God. We're his delegated authority here on earth. And you know, that's a no mean thing, the delegated authority of God. Do you know it was the hardest thing for Jesus to do was to get the authority? Do you know that? Because he laid his deity aside, left it in heaven to come here on earth. So he came as a man, just like you and I, man, women, in the flesh, carnal flesh. And the first thing he had to do was submit to everything the Father was saying. Because without submission, authority couldn't come. If you want authority, you've got to come under authority. Can you just, have you got that song for me? Praise God. I remember a kid's song we used to sing at church. I too am a man under authority. I say come and they come. I say go and they go. Do you know that song? No, me neither. <laughs> but it's a song I remember. It keeps coming back to me. That when the soldier, the soldier said to Jesus, he said, don't bother coming. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. That's authority. <laughs> and the soldier understood authority and he spoke with authority. And Jesus was in awe. He said, I haven't seen such great faith in all of Israel because this was the first lesson Jesus had to learn how to receive the authority of the Father to walk on earth as a man and still carry that authority. That's why when he submitted to God in every area, was in obedience in every part of his life, he gained authority. I'm going to read it to you out of scripture in a second. 
He had to come into obedience to the Father for authority to be released. You know, it's the hardest thing for the Lord to do here on earth was to release authority here on earth. He knew when he created angels and when he created mankind. He knew the angels were going to fall. 50% of them, was it? Third. Third, one third. third. 33 and a third. Sounds like an Irish joke, doesn't it? <laughs> Charity tree and a turd. <laughs> he ended up, he knew they were going to fall. He knew that Adam was going to sin. It, he didn't catch him by surprise. So he knew that somewhere along the line, he had to either him or himself or his son, who was under authority in heaven as a deity, he knew he had to come and pay the price here on earth for authority to be released so his church could then start to win the world to God. Amen? We've got to really be careful how we speak against the church, whether they're doing well or they're doing badly. Don't speak against them. Button the lip. I'm, I've had to learn that. In fact, thanks, Phil. This day, this week, Phil and I were having a yak. And uh, I don't know how he worded it, but it, it was this that I had to stop speaking against other churches. And I'd been doing that. I was ticked off with a few of them. <laughs> so I repent. I repent publicly. When I had the say time, mate. <laughs> when I had the tachyardi, when I was 65 years old, that's six years ago, my heart started racing on the day of my birthday. Can you believe it? I did a concrete pour. Normally you weren't there that day, you were sick. I had to go and do one somewhere. And so I had to work twice as hard. And next day, I had... <laughs> it's all your fault. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But I, I, I worked hard and I thought it was because I was working hard. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> it was that I had something in my heart that I hadn't dealt with. And what I had to deal with was I had to forgive a pastor who'd bad-mouthed me and, and came against me. And I took umbrage to that. I took exception to it. And I wanted to go down there and grab him by the throat. And I know you don't, wouldn't believe that in me, but <laughs> I did. And I had these, these emotions coming out, but I didn't realise that was a cause of this tachyardi until I was laying on the barouche at Victor Harbour Hospital and they are trying to rig me up to all these monitors to find out my heart rate. They wanted to inject me with magnesium to calm my heart down. And the nurse was panicking because my heartbeat was up 2.30, 2.40 and still climbing. And I could feel my heart jumping out of my chest and I grabbed it in my hands to steady it to try to stop it but I, I got hold of my whole heart can you believe that it was that's how far it was bouncing out of my chest and it was scaring me it was scaring the nurses more and they were nervous they dropped the needle and the doctor came and he just pushed them out of the way said here give me that and in the meantime I'm asking God well, what's the matter with me he said You've got to forgive that pastor, Raph. Immediately. I've got to tell you, God's not going to leave you in the lurch if you ask. He's going to tell you what the problem is. But you're going to have to be obedient to answer what you hear. Because without obedience, you're not going to walk in authority. You're not, you're not going to walk in the position he wants you to walk in. The call that he's put upon each and every one of us. And I'll never forget that, that day on the bruise. I just said, Lord, forgive me. I forgive him. As quick as that, my heart went down to 80 beats a minute from 230. Like it was, and the doctor's about to inject me. He looks up and says, oh, oh, what's happening here? And I'll never forget, I said, it's okay, doc. It was an issue of my heart. I had to forgive someone. <laughs> He's saying, of course it's an issue of your heart. You were having a heart attack, he said. I said, no, I had to just forgive someone because it affects me, you see. We can't come against our brothers and our sisters. You know that, that scripture that says we're all part of the body? If you hurt, I hurt. So you're only hurting yourself when you hold resentment against others in the body of Christ. David learnt the lesson. He would not touch the anointing 
even though that Saul was doing everything wrong. <laughs> and he, found, he went in the cave to, to get him. Saul went in the cave. You know the scripture, don't you? Went to the cave to get him. And David was deep in the cave. But in the night he snuck up and he could have taken Saul's life, but he cut off the corner of his robe to let him know that he could have done it. Amen. And I've got to tell you, you're all capable of turning your weapons against each other. But if you touch the anointing of God, God takes that so seriously. Because you're not touching the person, you're touching God. And you know, that's a curse. That is a curse that you can't come out of. Because it's not a curse by man to man, it's a curse from the Lord to us. Two types of curses. And we can't come out of a curse when God speaks against us. You can't come out of that. If God applies a curse to your life, he's the only one who can lift it. Amen? People don't like this sort of teaching, but I'm sorry, I've learned over the last 40 years, this is the truth. Yes. Two types of curses. One man can speak, and that can be broken quite easily by the blood of Jesus. But if God commands a curse on someone, there are so many instances in the Bible where, was it Abraham and Moses? Moses particularly interceded on behalf of the whole of his people. Who was it? He swallowed up 40 men and the whole family. They went straight to Hades. And then a curse broke out because they, they caused the rebellion. Those people caused the rebellion. I'm just trying to think who, who it was. Oram. Oh, yeah. And all his family. Yep. Rebellion of Korah. And so what happened from there? Not only was he striking that family, he was about to strike and started striking all of the people. He was ticked. <laughs> he was ticked off. You know why he was ticked off? They came against the authority of God. God's delegated authority. This is the most important thing. If you've got resentment against someone in the church, just zip it, because we're all anointed now. <laughs> you can't come against the anointed of God and get away with it. In fact, God takes it so seriously, David wouldn't dare. He learned this principle. This is why David was called a man after God's own heart. The first principle he, he learned was to come under authority. He came under Saul. He became Saul's son-in-law. And then, when Saul wanted to kill him, he didn't retaliate. He cut off that cloth. You know what that did? It stirred his heart so much that he realised where he was heading. God was training him in coming under authority. And then there was another time. What else did, when, when did he have an opportunity to kill Saul? There was another time that I read in the Word of God that he. Eh? Hey? Yeah, the cave. That, no, that's when he cut off the cloth. But there was another time too. Oh, when Abinadab, Abinadab, they snuck into the camp while Saul was sleeping. And Abinadab said, You can kill him now. Let's get rid of him now. He said, Don't touch him. He just grabbed his spear and his shield just to let him know he'd been there. <laughs> but he didn't touch him because he knew if he touched him, he would invoke a curse on his own life which would rob him of walking in authority ever. Do you understand what I'm saying? You want to know why we're not getting answers to prayer? It's because there's so much murmuring in the church. I think he said it this morning, kingdom divided, well, he wasn't speaking about the church, he was about the world. He's speaking about us. He's speaking, this kingdom, if it's divided, how can it stand? We have the ability, we have the ability to change the world. We have the ability to claim nations. We need to claim a station for God, but we don't walk in authority. So how can we possibly do that? Until we come into unity, that's where he commands a blessing. Double-minded people cannot expect anything from God. I've got to tell you, he's not talking about double-minded me and you. He's talking about double-minded me and me. <laughs> I'm 
I want to do the right thing, but I do the wrong thing. That's double-mindedness. Praise God. It's, this is such an important topic. Saul fell off his horse, blinded by the brilliance and glory of God. He was in total rebellion. He was killing Christians. <laughs> he was going around killing them. The first thing he learned was authority. That's the very first thing he learned. He came under the authority of Christ when he had the revelation. You know, the revelation had to come on the inside. And God wants to touch us on the inside. When someone has a go against you, get the revelation of what it is to let them go. <laughs> when, I, when I first came, just, just before I came here, a year before I came here, I was at a church at Happy Valley. And um, it was about that time the Lord sent me overseas for the first time. And I got commissioned in Malaysia. And I'll never forget, I did it out of obedience in my prayer closet. I went to the prayer closet and God spoke to me. He said, get ready, I'm sending you overseas. And I thought, oh, I am ready. You know, the whole church told me that I'd born again. I've been saved. Get out and do it. That's not God's way. God says, you come before me, let me prepare you. Then go out and you'll come, you'll be equipped and you do something that I sanction, something that's born in the spirit, not something that's born out of a good idea or an opinion. Opinionated men are what block the church from walking in victory today. You've got to go to the Lord to find out what he's saying. You've got to hear to what the word of God says and come into obedience to that word. Authority comes. I, I, um, I remember. I remember that time. I told the pastor, I said, I was praying God's sending me overseas. He said, yeah, we're going to send you to India. The church was affiliated with India. I said, he hadn't told me to go there. He gave me the word KL. I didn't even know where KL was. Kuala Lumpur, in Malaysia. But that's the word he spoke to me. My partner, Rock, phoned me at 3 o'clock that morning. He said, Raph, we've just been released. We're going overseas. Out of the mouths of two... We weren't talking about... We never planned on going overseas. God has spoken to me to get ready, and I've been getting ready for three months by getting up every night to spend time with the Lord to find out what I needed to do. I didn't want to go in blindly. If you go in blindly and do your own thing, you aren't going to see anything. You will never walk in the authority that he's given you. But if you give him time to show you, and it takes time, you see, we're flesh people, we're out of time, we're out of, we've got to get back into time. We're out of time with God stepping. We hear something, we want to run with it, and we're not equipped. He told me to get ready, and before I, I said, I, I am ready, aren't I? He said, no, you're not. He said, purpose your heart, you're wishy-washy. How many wishy-washy Christians have we got here today? I'm still wishy-washy at times. I've got to tell you, I think I've got it made in the shade at times because I can <clears throat> set my heart and walk like that. But I've got to tell you, I don't want to go backwards because he spoke something to me. And he said this. He said, your obedience purifies your soul. And it's in your suffering that you can walk in obedience. I learn obedience. Jesus had to learn obedience. Jesus, who left his deity behind... came here fully as a man, had to learn obedience by what he suffered. And then it was given to him. <laughs> Praise God. Do you know, oh, glory to God. Do you know the things you've been suffering? God says, I've been teaching you to walk in obedience, says the Lord. I've been teaching you obedience. He says, and there's times when you are disgruntled and still walk off in your own way. And God says, I'm taking you and leading you. I've put a bit in your mouth to bring you into obedience. And as you walk in obedience, says the Lord, I am releasing the anointing of authority. You've asked this, says the Lord. You've asked me. I see children come in, jailed in their body imprisoned in their body and I want to be the one to set them free. Is that what you've asked? God says there's only one way to get it. Have you asked those words exactly? Exactly. Well the Holy Spirit says it's coming. 
because of what you've been suffering, what you've been going through, you've been diligent to keep fronting up, says the Lord. Every one of us need to front up when God's trying to teach us something, otherwise we go around the mountain again. And God wants to release an incredible authority. His church, he wants it to be glorified through the authority of the saints because you're going to usher in the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you speak is going to bring the kingdom in. You know, the kingdom of God was in the kingdom of Jesus. Wherever he went, the kingdom went. Do you understand that? The kingdom, where Jesus went, the kingdom went. Wherever I go, the kingdom goes. Wherever you go, the kingdom goes. You're the ones that are supposed to manifest the kingdom of God here on earth. But without the obedience to the truth and to what he tells you, you won't see it. And then again, you better know you're hearing him and not hearing some other voice. Because some of you think you hear God, and I've got to tell you, when, when I lay it up against the word of God, I know you're not hearing him. I know you're not hearing him. When I lay it up against that plumb line of the word of God, the promise of God, you're hearing your own opinions. That's the third voice. You either hear God's voice, the enemy's voice, or you hear your own voice, which is generally stronger than all of them. <laughs> Because you haven't put them out of the way. Therefore, authority can't come. Do you know, Jesus submitted to the Father. I only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. Isn't that what he said? That's all he did. He just submitted to the Father continually. But he had to learn obedience. Let me read it to you. 2, two five eleven. Let's start there. Two scriptures. I'm going to give you two scriptures. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. Now remember where he came from. This is pretty difficult to explain in the scripture. But let me tell you, this is where he came from. He came from an equal standing in heaven. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Amen? That was what he, that's what he left behind to come here to establish authority, kingdom authority. But he made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant or a slave. There he is. He's up there. He's got all of this authority up there and he leaves it behind and comes to become a slave. Oh, my God. Can you, do you grasp this? I've got to tell you, there's such a key in this. If you get hold of this, authority will start to grow in your life. He leaves it behind, comes here on earth as a man and a slave. A slave to what? To the word of God. A slave to what God's saying do. So he cannot disobey in any way, place or shape or form, yet he had the choice to. He chose to obey. If he'd been disobedient at one point in his life, we wouldn't have salvation. He could have gone back. The father would have taken him back on an equal footing, equal standing, as it says. He didn't think it's such a great thing to be equal with God. He laid that down. That's what that scripture means. He laid down his deity at that point. He laid it down for us. Praise God. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient, say obedient, to the point of death, even the death of the cross. I want to tell you, when I went, when the Lord told me to go to Malaysia to get appointed, my pastor came against me. And he turned, tried to turn the eldership against me. But he couldn't. Then they started arguing with him and I thought, I've got to stop, I'm going to leave this place, otherwise I'm going to cause schism here. Because I didn't go against him. I'd actually given him 12 months of my life to help him build the church. He was appointed as a young pastor. And Peter Vacker said to me, will you, will you help him, support him? I said, yeah, of course. So for 12 months I ended up helping him to start that church. And I used to look at the mistakes he'd make and I had to shut my mouth and bite my lip. Praise God. 
Do you know what I found over those 12 months? I lost the anointing. Because it's not what God wanted me to do. It's what I was obedient to man and wanted to be a pleaser of the leadership. And I learned to not have fear of man from that point. Because when I lost the anointing, I knew I'd come out of what God was asking me to do. I wasn't being obedient to God, I was being obedient to my own opinions and what I thought was right. Praise God. And that's a lesson. That's an incredible lesson. And it's a lesson every believer's got to learn. And until you learn that, you won't walk in the authority that God wants for you. You won't walk in the authority to bring the kingdom in. I want to tell you, he wants to usher the kingdom in. We're in a time like never before. The world's trying to bring us into submission. But you've got to be submissive to God. Ask him. There's times you're going to have to be submissive to the world. Do you realise that? He's going to ask you to do that. We won't don't know why, but it may be to bring them in. But you've got to listen to what God's saying, not just carte blanche, say, you know, become, I'm, I'm part of the law. I tell you, people who are in the law are religious people. They won't see the authority that's supposed to come. He doesn't want you to be blindly obedient to something he's not telling you. As many as are led of the Spirit of God are true sons of God, Romans 8, 14. And that means that we have to get to that place of asking and receiving from God. Yeah, I have not because you ask not. It's all built out of relationship, not religion. Relationship is the narrow track with God. Relationship is what he wants from every one of you. He misses you. I want to tell you, there's people in this room right now, God says, come on back, I miss you. You started in that prayer closet and you walked away from it. You started in the place of being joined to God. I've got to tell you, I'm in guilty of that. I know what I'm speaking about. I'm in guilty of that. You have a close relationship with God and you get so busy you forget God. What a dangerous place to be. I've had to repent of that. Because I want to walk in authority. I want to establish the kingdom. I love the Lord. I love his kingdom. I love seeing people set free. There's nothing greater on earth. And you see, we well, prayed for a lady at that nursing home. Do you know the lady in the wheelchair with the, she used to have the oxygen bottle? Stage three or stage four lung cancer. And she went and got checked out and she came and she got me out of my mother-in-law's room. She said, come here, you're the man who prayed for me? He said, yep. Four weeks ago, she said. She said, when you prayed for me, she said, something happened. So I got myself checked out. She said, I'm healed. I said, what was the matter with you? I knew she had a lung bottle in her mouth. She said, I had stage four lung cancer. Now, I wish I could do that every day, but I didn't do it. God did. <laughs> delegated authority. See, the authority you have is Jesus in you. It's not yours. It's delegated. He's the one that won the authority. He's, he came. See what it says there? Let's read this again. He says... Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. Say, humbled himself. And became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given, given him the name which is above every name. And at that, at that name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth. You see, because he humbled himself, God released authority to him. He came under the authority, so authority was released. He broke the power of the law of authority. He opened it up so he could walk in authority and release it to us. That's why we have delegated authority. Because he paid the price and won authority. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Because he won the authority, Hebrews 5, let's go there, this is one of my favourite scriptures in the Bible, because it shows me that Jesus was the firstborn to show us how to go. He said, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears, to him who was able to save him from death. Did you know Jesus had to be saved from death? Yes, amen. Huh? Yes, amen. Did that blow your mouth? Jesus had to be saved. 
Praise God. He was the firstborn, firstborn again person. Praise him. We can go into a study of that. Very, very interesting study. And was heard because of his godly fear. Say godly fear. Godly fear is the key to revelation knowledge and understanding. If you've got fear of God, it means you'll be obedient to God. Okay? It's the key. Though he was a son, right, say, though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Though he was a son, he left his sonship back in heaven. Here he is, walking here on earth as a man, the son of Joseph and Mary. Yet he had a heavenly beginning and a deity. He was equal with God in heaven as his son. You know, <clears throat> in the family, my daughter Alice is sitting in the crowd here today. She's equal with all of my kids and myself and Denise. Can you hear me? Can they hear me? Hopefully. Okay. Yes. Yep. Oh, praise God. As a son, I'm going to finish this in a second. I just want you to get the, the crux of this, okay? It's important. As a son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. In that first church, I had to put my head down, bum up, they, they dragged me before an apostle of the church, saying I was in rebellion, and I wasn't. I just wanted to be obedient to what God was saying. I decided not to defend myself, but I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, if it gets too tough, I don't want to retaliate. Just give me a word of knowledge that will bring them undone. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, I was ready and he would have given it to me. And it wouldn't have been condemning, it would have been bricks bringing forward. So I learned that was the first step in learning authority. I didn't go against it, but I said, you can't stop me from going, I've got to go. I can't do anything about it. I said, please, if you do it, then ask God, and he will tell you. But if you're too full of pride, because you've got a position as a pastor or whatever it is, or any position, you'll block your own healing. You'll block the ability to walk in authority. And I said, so for your own sake, ask God, because I know what he's told me. I have confirmation. I said, I've got a partner who called me in the middle of the night, told me exactly what God had been speaking to me, even the timing. Three o'clock in the morning, and we're both up in prayer. He was at Campbelltown, I was in Aberfoyle Park. Same words, word for word. I said, Do you know where we're going? He said, Yes, KL. I said, Do you know where that is? He is a bit thick. He said, No. I said, Me neither. Better get the map out. <laughs> <laughs> so we found out 
And then, then I came here. Then when I got back, I had an anointing, a purpose, and God was sending me up here. And we came, and lo and behold, we had the whole fraternal come against us. And I wondered why. I'm thinking, Lord, am I in your will? I had to, I've got to tell you, um, it made me question whether I was in the will of God or not. And God said, yes. He said, just don't retaliate. My God, you know how tempted I was at times? <laughs> you know what I did? I've got to tell you, I was terrible. I took it to the closet. And this is a lesson, okay? Don't retaliate in the natural. Shut your mouth. Your mouth will only get you into trouble. But go before God and pour your grievances out before God. You know what I did? I said, Father, if these men are against your work, sack them all and bring your men in. And you know what happened? Within three weeks, three, or it was it four pastors, left Victor Hahn. Do you remember that? Almost within three weeks. He just moved it. All the ones who were persecuting us. In the council, who were going up against something. See, authority needs to be tempered. He won't give it to you if you're going to use it abusively. You know, if you give the authority to some Christians, they shut out every traffic light between here and Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? No, we just do it without God speaking to them. But he wants you to know and be obedient to what he says. When we were applying for a building here, i got to tell you, it didn't look like we were going to ever be able to get a building on this land. We ended up $42,000 we spent in court. And still didn't get anywhere. To about that time I decided to pull out and not waste God's money. I decided I'd better start listening a bit more carefully and bless the witch that was cursing us. You know what we did? I blessed her. You know what happened to her? She died within two months. And I blessed her with my whole heart. I've got to tell you, with my whole heart I blessed her. I didn't do it there, yeah, bless the witch. I started looking at her salvation. And the guys down at the council kept putting stumbling blocks in front of us for no reason, just trying to wear our money out so that we couldn't fight the question we were after. Why we could have a building on this land. And they take us off on all these money traps. You know, things like, well, it'll be seen by the, from the road. How are you going to cover the building? I said, any way you want it. I said, I'll put up a screen of trees, a spade of trees on the building, whatever you want. Well, you tell us what you want to do. I said, you tell me what you want, I'll do it. No, they wouldn't tell us what they wanted. <laughs> because they wanted to draw our money out. So I said, OK, we'll just spade in the trees. I got an architect to draw it on the plan. And they said, no, that's not what we're after. They said, we'd rather you put a screen on the trees. What about your car park? What sort of car park do you want? Sealed or unsealed? I said, what, what, what do you want? What would you pass? No, it's not up to us. You've got to tell us what you want. That's, that's the sort of persecution we were receiving, OK? We were receiving persecution from the pastors. It's how you deal with the persecution that comes against you that he grows you. And you can't grow authority unless you come through the persecution. What are you suffering about? I'm not talking about sickness. Sickness does not come from God. All right? I'm talking about persecution, people persecuting. What about Paul? He was persecuted. The thorn in the side of the Pharisees, the religious people. That grew his authority. You need to come through whatever's been happening in your life and deal with it through your prayer life. Deal with it with the Lord. Him and you will fix it. One of the hardest things for Jesus to do, you know. Yet he fulfilled the promise. He was obedient even unto death. Greater love hath no man who lay his life down for his brother. He was obedient in love. He was obedient in releasing authority. Everything that we needed, we've got through our Lord Jesus. The authority we have today is through him because he lives in us. He is all authority on earth now. Every knee has to bow because he won that battle. That's amazing, isn't it? 
It wasn't necessary in heaven. He was equal with God. It was necessary to be done here on earth. And for that law of authority to be established, he had to come and do that. That's why this is so important. In your humility, in your obedience, he is training your soul. He is purifying your soul. That's what the Word of God tells me. Whose soul is corrupt in this place? Do you know what your soul is? Your will, your intellect. Amen? Your will, your intellect makes up your soul. Praise God. Our souls are corrupt because that's how we were born. God wants to deal with that today. I just want to pray a prayer with you right now. Just do this. Some of you may if you're not feel you need to do this, but I want to tell you everyone in this place needs it. Everyone. <coughs> Say this, I too am a man under authority. You say, come, and I'll come. You say, go, and I'll go. I want to hear from you, Lord. My authority comes from you, Lord. I repent of any, anything I've done, any word I've spoken against a brother or a sister in judgment, I ask you to forgive me, Lord. Because until I get this right, authority will not come. I release my brothers and sisters from my judgment. I ask you to release me from judgment. And I may enter into the authority that's been delegated to me through my Lord Jesus Christ. Help me to be obedient. Help me to be humble. So authority may come upon my life. No, glory to God. You're not going to be put in position until that prayer is fulfilled. I want to tell you that the Spirit of God is on me right now. And He's on you. I can see Him falling on different people in this place right now. Because He wants to release mantles of authority in the church. He wants the church to rise up in its authority. And that means you walking hand in hand with what He's asking. Amen. Father, we just thank you for this. In Jesus' name. And all the saints said, Amen. Glory to God. We have some communion, you reckon? I hope you get something out of that. I, I can't stop on that subject. I've got to tell you. And I think, the minute I think I've got it, he, he, he just hits me with more. It's like a bottomless pit. Of learning how to touch this authority. It's imperative. You bring the kingdom wherever you go. You change the atmosphere through the authority you carry. There are lots of Christians walking around, should have been in Christianity years, still have no authority. Speak like they have, talk like they have, but the truth is that there is no substance or manifestation of that authority. Amen. That's the truth. Thanks, guys. No, thanks, Paul. Any time. Try that one, Briggy. Colin Buchanan. Briggy? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Thank you, Lord. Come on, I'm just eating some of the bread before I start. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
Christ going to divide it? No, they call them Buchanan. The Centurion Secret. Hey? Donut Man. Donut Man, what is it? What was it? Did you get that? Yeah, the computer's just gone off the line. Oh, give me, give me your, your phone, Alex. Yeah. Just give it a mic. Yeah. 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 No worries. Thanks, Bob, if you get it. No question, no. No, no, no. That's the one, that's the one. Beautiful. Whack your mic next to it, will you? Put the mic up for her, will you, Briggy? That's the one. Stop the gospel, can Oh. 